Let's now look at the architecture, the basic architecture of a recurrent neural network. Here it is, and I invite you again to take us through this architecture. Okay, so when we're dealing with RNNs, typically you might come across two different schematic representations. The one here is the sort of the folded compact representation, and then you can unfold it into this unraveled uh, representation. It actually makes a lot more sense and becomes much more intuitive when you look at the unraveled version because it starts to look a lot um, like the, uh, the multi-layer perceptrons that we saw earlier. Um, so in the compact version, let's look at the notations first. So you have the input x, which is again your time series. The output o, which in this case, let's assume it's a time series as well. So let's say x inputs and outputs are aligned, so it's a many-to-many -many example. And you have this h in the middle, which is the hidden state. And you can see in the folded version, the, the, the uh, h kind of feeds back to itself. And what it means is that at every time step, the hidden state from the previous time step affect what, it's, what the, uh, the hidden state of the current time step. And this becomes a lot more intuitive, as I said, when we look at this guy over here. So for time step t, you have x of t, o of t, inputs and outputs, the hidden state. And then at, um, also, you have information from the previous step, uh, which would be x t of, uh, minus 1 and its hidden state uh, feeding into h of t. And then that is used to predict, recursively predict the h, plus t, uh, h at t plus 1. Um, so there. a question, <laughs> when you're looking at time and you have signals like h of t and h of t minus 1, h of t minus 1 has already gone through its thing, but it's going to be fed into h of t. So there's a, a, basically a concept of delay, mm -hmm. right? So you could look at that little circle with the V in the compact form as having a little delay of Absolutely. one cycle, right? Mm -hmm. So that, that means we, we basically have a, a delay feed-through, and at every point in the feed-through, we have this format that you've described. That's correct. So let's look at this mathematically. Mm -hmm. um, now that we've got the, the notations down, uh, let's see how it actually, how the computations actually happen. So again, uh, I'd like to look at the, the unfolded version. So, and then we have the equations up here. So at any time step, uh, the, 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 what's really going into the H of T is a combination of some function of the input, U of X. Uh, X is, again, the input, and U is some parameters that are associated with this connection right here. Uh, so that's the first term. We also have a, a term that's associated with the previous time step, which is h uh, t the hidden state h t minus 1 multiplied by some other set of parameters v, which is uh, uh, associated with the hidden state, plus some bias b. So that we start off over there. And then the, in order to calculate the hidden state, you have to apply, let's call that A. We ha you have to apply some activation. Uh, in this case, uh, we, uh, we look at 10H, which is a very common activation for, for RNNs. So you, uh, apply, you essentially feed your A of T into the activation function, and that get, gives you the hidden state. So that will be what's happening inside this blue block. And then in order to compute the output, you have to take the hidden state, multiply it by another set of parameters, which we're denoting with W, and add another bias C. And that will get, get us over here to the output. And if we want to predict the, if we want to uh, learn this, what, uh, let's say you have a case of binary classification, and you want to go from the output to the class, then you would do something like applying a softmax on top of it, and then taking the argmax when you're at inference time. Um, and then this whole thing will be repeated for any time step using the same formulation. So I have a question. Tanich. We're going to look at Tanich in a minute. Uh, one of the things that Tanich has, it has asymptotes that are really flat. So first of all, why do we want to look at use Tanich? And I'll bring it up on the next uh, slide. There it is. Why do we want to use Tanich when it has that flattening out? And uh, that has an implication of vanishing gradients. Yeah. So please explain why we need Tanich instead of other possible activations. Mm -hmm. So as you said, uh, Tanich, t because of the way it's bounded, its first and second derivative, will, uh, uh, it, it, it's a good fit for 
um, sort of addressing the problem of vanishing uh, and exploding gradients. But there are other options that have that uh, characteristic. The reason why we choose PanH is uh, compared to like say sigmoid is that as you can see on this graph, it's bounded the output between negative one and positive one. And what that does uh, effectively is it allows the hidden state to, uh, it, to have its value both increased and decreased, which again, what it means is it the hidden state can remember or forget relevant stuff in the time sequence when it, once it's learning from the sequential data. So we're willing to trade something off here, those flat pieces that can have zero derivative and don't allow the mm -hmm. gradient to move in gradient descent. Yeah. That's the way it is, but we need to be able to implement this idea of forgetting and remembering, so we need that uh, weight associated with the activation, the final output, to be both positive and negative. That's correct. Well, we've got the forward pass. Now take us through, at high level, the backward pass. Uh, so now that we've established this, again, uh, compact and unfolded version, the backpropagation becomes very similar to how we uh, deal with backprop in, in MLPs. Uh, so if you look at this guy here, um, the, the, the red arrows will show that the, are showing the direction of uh, the backwards information flow. So you can see at each time step we have stuff coming in, coming down from the output to the hidden state, as well as from the future time steps to the hidden state and then back to the input. And we have three sets of parameters. We have uh, the U's, the V's, and the W's. And the difference uh, in this context, the difference between this and how we would do backprop in, in, in MLPs is that uh, the, 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 the parameters u, v, w in each time step are actually tied together. Whereas in an MLP, you would have uh, parameters of the of individual layers optimized for separately. And um, another thing is that um, on, top of, uh, on top of the fact that it's ascending backwards, another important piece of information is that because we have these time steps that are essentially uh, represented by individual layers, uh, when we're backpropping, we're going through all these time steps, we call this whole process backpropagation through time. Because at each time step, uh, at each layer, you're going back one step in time. So if I understand correctly, when we do that backprop in this case, we're still going to be requiring to use automatic differentiation mm -hmm. and mapping, and everything is smooth. So now what we need to do is see, we've already talked about it, see how there are possible limitations in the architecture which we will need to fix in some manner. Mm -hmm.